Howdy folks! So it seems this is the time of year when artists are supposed to hop on YouTube and announce their plans for the year so they can sheepishly fess up to what they haven't accomplished next year. And, glutton for punishment that I am, here I am, with you, announcing my plans for 2019. Now, I've been drawing for decades and adulting, as you kids like to say, for, well, a long time. So I don't dive into January with the same zeal that young pups do. I know life happens, and I know setting a lot of high goals can just make you feel stressed at the end of the year. The truth is, setting goals can diminish what you actually do accomplish, and it can turn your positives into negatives. For example, at the start of 2018, I had no idea that I'd start my public domain redesign series. I had no plans to do sketchbook summer. I owned watercolor pencils but had no plans to use them, and I did some really nice pieces with them this year. I surprised myself with my own art, and that's always an accomplishment. Those are some great accomplishments, but those accomplishments can feel empty or not so great if you have a pile of things you didn't accomplish to compare them to. For example, every year for the past couple of years, I've told myself I want to finish this eight-page comic I have in the wings. You may think, wow, that's not a lot of pages to get done, especially if you already have four finished. But the truth is, there's no point in finishing it right now. The character it deals with, Threads, won't appear in our novels until book four, and the comic itself coincides with book five of East End Irregulars. So releasing the comic sooner than that would be cool, but it wouldn't serve any marketing purpose. It won't win me any fans. Um, an eight-page comic, no matter how good it is, is just a drop. It can't make a splash, and it won't win readers over. Uh, not long term. It could help build an audience down the line when it's supported by the more substantial uh, material of our novels, uh, East End Irregulars books 4 and 5 when we get to them, but if I finished it right now, it wouldn't necessarily serve a purpose. I guess what I'm getting at is, there's always little things you want to get done things that you tell yourself you should be able to get done. Um, but those little things pile up and become big things, and you only have so much time, so you need to prioritize. It's easy to put pressure on yourself to have a huge list of little things you want to do, then feel bad because you didn't get that little thing done. Uh, you know, so with that, I've put a lot of thought into my 2019 goals. There's a lot I want to get done, but here's my top priority list. The stuff that I feel needs doing, or I want to do so much that I'm giving it that bump and saying it should get done this year. Number one, finish my giant Challenger Foundation group shot piece. Obviously, I'm working on this one, as you can see, because it's the uh, video for this particular audio track. Um, I took a break from it to do Inktober and my Christmas content, but I'm springing back on onto track with it now. By the way, there's another example of to-do lists getting in the way, mind you. Every year before 2018, I had said I wanted to do Inktober this year. Well, I did it this year. I mean last year. I did it in 2018. And I churned out some really great pieces, but it sidelined some things, like this Challenger Foundation piece, that were really important to me. Just something to chew on if you're gnashing your teeth over not accomplishing a 2018 goal yourself. And no, Inktober isn't on my 2019 must-do list. I might do it, but I'm not going to get hung up on it if I bow out this year. Anyway, uh... This Challenger piece is, is especially a priority because I think it'll look good in convention displays or panning across it for uh, future videos. So, well, I've always been daunted by giant group shots and I also feel pushing myself is important. So I think that this is also a piece that will help me grow as an artist. 
And I think you need to not only look at what you want to accomplish uh, in terms of pieces, but I think you also need to have a uh, goal in how to grow artistically in your skill, too. So I'd like to do more shots with multiple characters. Uh, maybe even another group shot in 2019. But I will get this one done, for sure. Goal number two. Um, I want to post a video using my Arteza brush pens. I've experimented with these a bit, and I really like them. I will tentatively say that I love them. Um, but I've only done a few pieces with them. Uh, a lot of them were practice pieces. A lot of them don't have backgrounds. Um, but I, I am really enjoying them as a medium. Dare I say I've gotten Copic marker level results out of them? And they're comparatively cheap. Now, you need water and brushes to play with them, so there's more uh, gear that you have to take with you and all that jazz. But, well, like I said, I need to do a video about the Arteza brush pens. Goal number three. I want to do at least one of the Copic uh, Color 3 Marker Challenge videos. Copic releases a three color challenge of its own every month. They don't randomly pick the colors. They pick ones that uh, they feel would go well together and blend nicely. Uh, but they're, they could be radically different colors. Like they could be pink, brown, and cream, or uh, what was it? Champagne, slate, and azure, or something. Um, but they started posting these challenges in 2018 every month, and I was late to the party. So looking back retroactively at the challenge blogs, I had all the markers necessary for three months, and there was a third month where the colors were so pretty, I want to buy them anyway. Um, so that's a challenge video I want to do. I want to get at least one of those out this year, um, because, you know, when I picked my own colors, uh, I really had a blast doing the Green Goblin piece, uh, which is funny because I generally don't like drawing villains. So, goal number four. I want to finish painting a new cover for East End Irregulars Book One, After Dark. The first cover of After Dark was drawn by me, but painted by someone else, uh, Maddie LaSure, aka American Dork. Uh, and it was beautiful, but it was a bit too subtle, and it didn't convey the adventure feel of the book. But at the time, digital painting was not my strength, and I couldn't take a stab at it myself. I redid the cover later, and parts of it looked great particularly Miasma in the background, but Torrent and Cascade look amateurish. Uh, the second book's cover looks a lot better. I improved then and am pushing myself to get better now, so... Uh, but people at cons always pick up the second book, Dismal Tide, first, and they're interested in that, and then we have to say that's actually the second book in the series and hand them the first book uh, with the less pretty looking cover. Um, so I'm in the process of digitally painting the first book's cover to look more like, heck, better than the second East End Irregulars book cover. As a side note, it would be a nicer goal if digital painting didn't take me forever and a day. But something on this list has to feel like work, or I wouldn't be pushing myself, would I? On a side note, if you create book covers, do some research into fonts and what different styles convey. One of my biggest regrets with this book cover is actually the font choice. I think this font is cool, and parts of this book can be creepy, but it's not a horror novel, and this font says horror novel. The rest of our books don't suffer from this problem because, well, I learned to do better. Hopefully, you can learn from my mistakes. Okay, and here's the big one. Number five. I want to have something ready to publish by the end of this year. Now, 
I say this every year, and some years I surprise myself, and some years I wonder what happened. In 2014, my husband Mike and I put out a novel, a novella, a short story collection, and a short story. So four books. That was fantastic. Um, in 2015, we put out two, our longest novel yet, and a short story, Salamander Six, which is just a short story as an ebook but uh, we repackaged it with other short stories and made a short story collection as a physical book, which is a convention exclusive uh, when it's a paperback. So yeah, two books in 2015. In 2016, we wrote and drew a lot, but only managed to eke out one official release, and it was just a short Christmas story on the AscensionEpoch.com blog. In 2017, I got pregnant, and, uh, well, that, that was both one of the happiest and saddest times of my life. The pregnancy was plagued with troubles, which, thank God, resulted with my son being safe and sound and healthy, but, yeah, um, no books. There was no way there would be any books. And, uh... <sighs> The only stories we uh, quote-unquote published in 2018 weren't books at all because we only read them. And those were the two Christmas stories Mike and I read during my Christmas speed paints on this channel. There's an order to which Mike and I publish our books, but we don't write and draw our books in order. So we've got a lot, I mean a lot of books in various stages of doneness. And writing a book is difficult because we don't like to force resolutions or haphazardly plow through the problems our characters face to reach an ending. Um, if we come across a problem while writing, we take a break, we talk about it, we try to resolve it. We'll walk away from books for weeks or months talking about them periodically until we finally get a good conclusion and can resume writing. And well, Sometimes you feel like writing certain characters more than others. If I'm up for sharing my headspace with wet behind the ears teenagers, I'm writing the East End Irregulars. Uh, the Challenger Foundation offers more familiar refuge with uh, 20 and 30 something characters and bulwark if I'm feeling particularly parenty. Uh, if I want to get really far removed from reality, I write Martian War Chronicles, and that's not even considering things like, do I want to write some pulse-pounding action today, or some laid-back character development heavy dialogue, um, or an upbeat scene, or something depressing or disturbing, because at the end of the day, the scene you write best is the one that you're feeling, and if you're not feeling it, you're not going to write a good scene. And I don't know if you've had this experience, but I know I can often tell when I'm reading a story that someone forced themselves to finish when they weren't feeling it. So I can't set a goal like, I want to finish this book this year, but I want to write chapters and illustrate enough images that will eventually go into books that hopefully by the end of 2019 at least one of the books we have in the wings will be finished and we can have it ready for editing and printing and all that jazz in 2020. Uh, I guess an exception to this rule would be that if you're always putting something off for years and years and tweaking it and never getting anything you want done, then maybe you should consider forcing yourself to hit a hard deadline just to prove you can get something done. And obviously when I'm working for someone else, I hit hard deadlines. But when you're at a spot where you can normally produce content and you're confident that you will get your project done eventually if you keep polishing it, then I think it's more important to schedule dedicated time to work on a project and just work toward it than it is to set a hard deadline and force yourself to get it out. On a fuzzier, more vague scale, I do have things I want to accomplish with my art this year, growth-wise. I think these sorts of goals are very important, and you should set them. 
uh, but they require you to reflect on your artistic shortcomings and identify your weaknesses. So, as I said before, I want to continue adding backgrounds on my work. Uh, I also want to focus on capturing more motion and dynamic poses in my artwork. I've been trying to improve on this every year and did some pretty nice pieces last year. I generally do see an improvement every year, so I'm hoping uh, 2019 continues the trend. And hmm, I'm always wondering what style I should be moving toward. I should probably do an entire video on this, but well, I have a style. I think you can look at most of my artwork and say, Shell Presto did this. But I love comic book style art, and I love weird fiction and pulp novel style painterly art, and those sort of battle within me. I'm not sure which muscles and skills I should be flexing more, hard lines and inks, or realism in painting. But that's a journey, not a destination, so we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But um, I did just get a new watercolor set, the Prima Confections Woodland set, so I suppose I'll be working on painting somewhat. And there is overlap in both of those style goals. I definitely need to work on my muscle studies, and that will help with both. Okay. That's it, the short list. If you're wondering where the second part of the pencils and inks on this piece went, fret not. I'll post them. But I wanted to get this New Year's video out while it was still relevant, and considering this piece is one of my goals and footage of my digital coloring process is easier to edit, here we are. One of my soft, more flexible goals is to try to get more videos out in general, by the way. So. Do you have any hard art goals this year? General things you want to improve with your art? Do you find it easy to identify what you need to work on as an artist? Do you want to see me finish the coloring job on this Challenger Confidential group shot? That last question was a trick question, because I'm trying to get you to subscribe so you can see it completed. Seriously though, if you liked this art chat and my work, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. And if you do have any art questions or want to share your art goals for 2019, please leave a comment. And last but not least, some of the characters in this piece of artwork appear in our first Challenger Confidential book, Copper Knights and Granite Men. The rest will appear in future books. If you're at all curious about them, you can check them out on Amazon.com or other online booksellers or learn more at ascensionepoch.com. Till next time, folks, have an awesome day, a happy start to your 2019, and happy drawing. Presto, over and out. Hey, you stuck around. Awesome. Remember what I was saying about reflecting on your shortcomings? Well, the new year is also a great time to step back and look at your strides, too. This is a great exercise because I think it's really easy as an artist to feel your shortcomings in skill and artistic inadequacies, but when you put similar pieces side by side, old versus new, and see improvement, and if you practice diligently, that will happen. Well, that's just a bowl full of warm fuzzies. I did a couple of pieces this year that I can compare to older pieces and really say I improved. So I thought I'd share that with you fine folks. So first up is a drawing of Callie from the East End Irregulars versus Maureen from Martian War Chronicles. There's a four year gap between these two. Besides Maureen looking more elegant, you can see I was far less afraid and more confident drawing the ocean water last year as opposed to 2014, where I just sort of phoned it in with horizontal lines. There are no textures on Cali or the seagull in 2014. They're both flat line work, 
but you can see on Maureen I've really learned to look at textures and uh, you know look at some shading even when using ink and uh, capture that shading with a pen and there's more flow and weight in Maureen's hair I draw Gandalf fairly often uh, he's one of my favorite characters from Lord of the Rings and who doesn't love that wily wizard uh, well besides adventure adverse hobbits trolls and orcs and goblins don't count anyway neither of these are exactly masterful I think I spent two or three hours a pop on each but there's definitely a skill bump on the second one which is five years later I don't have such a reliance on thick outlines and I'm using color and light to define shapes better these two pieces featuring Corona and Torrent from the East End Regulars show a three-year difference and I was actually surprised when I looked at them because I honestly thought the 2015 piece was pretty darn good when I did it um, there's a lot of scrapbook paper on the right piece so the coloring job is a little misleading and I used uh, Copics in the newer piece versus Prismacolors in the older ones so you have to factor all that in uh, but the softer line work, uh, more confident posing, and better reliance on lighting and color to convey the shape of the face speaks to my improvement, I think. And finally, uh, these two are both Challenger Confidential book illustrations. The first one published in 2014, the second one to be published in the future. I've gotten better at conveying a sense of motion and really pushing a pose to extremes. Something I have to keep working at because it doesn't yet feel natural. I'm still very proud of the 2014 drawing, but I think the 2018 one is definitely more refined and shows a better understanding of lightweight line weight with the pen. Also, the background on the first piece is very simple. Um, I, I drew the trees and the fence and not very detailed and that uh, New York skyline is a digitized photo um, so whereas in 2018 I hand drew the entire detailed background with uh, careful attention uh, the latest one isn't colored yet but I think when I get around to that then the difference will be even more night and day so Consider breaking out your old sketchbooks as we start the new year and doing some side-by-side -side comparisons. You may surprise and delight yourself. Happy New Year, folks. Presto. Over and out.